From Taipei City, Taiwan, the Chinese Taiwan nine ball champion, if you would, Mr. Xiao Leng Feng, please. And his opponent, the 2001 International Figure Tournament Champion, 1999 World Champion, the magician from Manila, the Philippines, Efren Prince. And now let's take a look at our Mohegan Sun tournament format. This will be two sets, each of them a race to five games. In case of a tie, there will be a one-rack sudden death tie breaker. This will be alternating break with a 30-second shot clock on each player with one timeout per rack. And this will be a foul on all balls. Welcome inside the Wolf Den here at Mohegan Sun. Mitch Lawrence and Alan Hopkins, and trust me, both of us are very excited about seeing the man at the table, Efren Reyes from Manila in the Philippines, one of the truly great, great Q artists in the world. Here at the International Challenge of Champions, one of these players will move on into the finals against Mika Imanen, and Alan. And Efren has failed to pocket a ball on the break, left the cue ball down the bottom of the table and the one ball in the center of the table. I don't believe that Fung has a shot on the one ball, so we'll see a safety here, probably just hitting the one to the bottom rail, trying to keep the cue ball so he can't hit the one. Oh, he, he played a, he tried to play the one in the corner pocket. He tried to cut back, cut it, and ended Watch up. Out. Oh, he got away with that. He almost scratched. Well, that was a very tough shot to start out with. Right off the bat, very aggressive play. Xiao. And notice that Mitch, how the, how the cue ball, excuse me, Mitch, but the cue ball is right in the side pocket. So this is not an easy shot to start out with for Ephraim either. He has to come down table. And look at the no speed. No problem. Look at the speed on the <laughs> cue ball. It, I mean, this he's called the magician for a reason. You know, he actually has beautiful speed on the table with the cue ball. Cue ball control is excellent. We will talk about him a lot during this match. There is pretty much nothing that Efren can't do <laughs> with that cue in his hand. So he takes care of the two. Mitch, I would definitely say he's the man to beat. Now, here's the three ball. He's going to pocket it in the corner and try to come around table for the four ball somehow, either draw the ball or follow it. You may see him draw the ball here. Low right-hand spin. Okay, he's elected to take a long shot on the four ball. Now, this thin cut. Efren got into these semifinals by defeating Niels Fian, the 2001 Netherlands nine-ball champion, 7-5. Good pocket speed there. I mean, there's a side pocket shot now, and this is a little tricky because if he hits it hard, the five could jump out of the side pocket. He's going to be forced to play the five ball in the side pocket and try to bring the cue ball one, two, three over here for the six or follow it and come out. And not an easy shot, and did he get there? He came right on top of the six. No. And that's a bad break, but he has a good safety. What you'll see now is some of Ephraim's cue ball control. There it is. The six ball is very close to the rail. What he'll do is hit the six ball very thin and bring the cue ball down table and try to get behind the eight ball if he can, somewhere in this area. So moving along through the first rack, let's see what he leaves. He may have hit it hard enough to get behind the nine, behind did he? Behind the nine. <laughs> wow, almost. Very close. Nice. <laughs> Good shot. Yes, he, he elected to go behind the nine, which he had very little room for error, but it looks like he's left a shot. Now, as Xiao Lang Feng takes a look at this, we want to mention Olhausen, the official table sponsor. Olhausen, the best in billiards, featuring AccuFast cushions. We'll give you some of the other playing conditions and sponsors as we go along. People who are bringing you this great event and a nice shot there. Very good shot coming off. I'm sitting down watching Ephraim run a few balls and missing the first shot at the table. Now he has made a great shot on the six and set up an opportunity to win the first game. Xiao Lang Feng, the 2001 World All-Stars Pro Tournament Champion, the 2001 Taiwan Nine Ball Champion. And you know there are some fabulous players over in Taiwan. This is one gentleman who can play. This would be for a one-nothing lead in set number one. 
here in Uncasville, Connecticut against Efren Reyes. One of these two players will move into the finals and a chance to win $50,000. Hello, everybody, and welcome inside the Wolf Den, Alan Hopkins and Mitch Lawrence. And as I said, we are excited about watching two great players, Efren certainly, but a player that we haven't gotten a chance to see, Mr. Fung from Taiwan. And he has already had a great tournament because he knocked off Corey Duell, the 2001 Player of the Year. So any question about whether he can play was answered early. Oh, without a doubt. He, he was behind 6-4, to four, Mitch, and came back and beat Corey 7-6. And he played super. I mean, he doesn't miss much at all. You know, he's a great player, and he deserves to be here, and it's going to be a great match. Well, that's the thing about the turn, the International Challenge of Champions, because $50,000 going to be on the line in the finals. These players under tremendous, tremendous amount of pressure. Every shot is critical, and they know it. And it starts to build, and as this match goes along, you will start to feel it. I know they will start to feel it for sure. <laughs> well, Ephraim's feeling the break that Fung just made because he made ball on the break he's pocketed the looks like the six ball and he has a nice shot here's the one ball and here's the cue ball what he's concerned is going to make the one in this corner and here's the two ball so he's concerned about position we talked earlier you and I Alan about the break before this match started and we'll develop that a little bit as we go along because it was important in these players earlier matches especially Efren who had a little bit of trouble with his break in an earlier match and as we see Xiaoling Feng well, that's just missed that and Efren Reyes will have ball in hand. That's just a mistake Mitch. I mean, he tried to cut that very thin and stay down the table for the two. Now Efren gets a big break here because he comes to the table with ball in hand and a nice opportunity to win the second game where he didn't break him. So the two and the three are together. Notice how he can play left handed just <laughs> <laughs> he did that so easily that Q went to the other hand. Yes. The Philippine Man. players, Mitch, all of them, they can shoot behind their back. They can shoot left-handed. They can shoot jacked up. I mean, they just do everything with a cue stick. They're very good cueist. Well, and he is an, an absolute icon over there. I mean, he is just a legend in the Philippines. And he's influenced, if I'm not mistaken, an entire generation of players. Well, he's a legend I mean, over here, too, you know, Mitch. I mean, he, he came over to America, the Philippine players did, and showed another way of playing nine ball. And... I mean, kicking at the balls, he does it all great. When Handles you say another way, that's what you're talking about. Much more offensive game? Well, not only offense, but also a great safe game. In other words, he plays the right shots. He brings the cue ball in the right direction. Now, he's left himself a little bit of a tough shot here with the cue ball on the rail. He's going to elevate a little. Probably see him hit this with a little bit of speed. There it is. I mean, he's a great shot maker also. Savvy, savvy man is Efren Reyes. And as he moves around the table, I'm going to give you a few more of the playing conditions. They're playing on Simona's billiard cloth. And underneath that cloth, Leani Genuine Italian Slate. We'll be using silver cup chalk. And in between racks, when the other players at the table, they'll be sitting in Mikhail Darafif game room furniture. And Efren Reyes doing what he needs to do. He got a little around the table. He's got a tough shot here. On the well, Mitch, he got a little bad on the eight ball. He's getting to have a little problem with the speed of the table. But this obviously, I hope he calls the shot. Did he call it? I don't know. I don't he know did if he not look it. like he did. And we will find out. He didn't call the he nine. He did not ball. call the nine. And here we go. We're stuck. <laughs> and he did not call the nine ball. So now, but notice where the cue ball is. So he got a little lucky here. That the cue ball is so right not ball in hand. No, the nine is just spotted. It is not a foul. In this format, you must call the nine ball. And we saw it in an earlier match. Steve Knight gave up a very early game to Mika Iminen, the second rack of the match, by not calling it. And from there, it was all downhill for Steve Knight. We'll see if Efren Reyes can come back from that. Got to be disappointing to go all through the rack, Allen, and give oh, it back. Very difficult shot here, though. It is yep. disappointing, but he did get the cue ball down table, so... This is not an easy shot, and there you go. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of justice there for Efren. We'll see. Now Efren's going to call this one. <laughs> and this is not an easy shot either, I'll tell you. It's very difficult shots with the $50,000 at stake. A lot of pressure. Single elimination format. Oh. I was going to say that I did not think he would miss that chance twice, but he has. Well, not an easy shot, though. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's all you can say. <laughs> Unbelievable. 2 nothing now. Xiao Lang Feng of Taiwan over Efren Reyes of the Philippines truly is an international challenge of champions. 
some of the tremendous fan support here in Connecticut Mohegan Sun an incredible venue for this event Uncasville Connecticut and Efren Reyes has come all the way from the Philippines for a chance of fifty thousand dollars in the finals the winner of this match will move on against Mika Imanen who beat Steve Knight and Alan you were talking about Efren changing his break a little bit and he <laughs> did and he made some balls I love the way he's breaking he's cutting the one now here's the two ball he's going to be shooting the two ball He's going to try to make it in the corner pocket if he can cut it in. There it is. Nicely done. Notice the position. He hit the cue ball a little hard. It's going to have a tough, little bit of a cut on the three ball. But the four ball's in the center of the table, so he should be okay position. Oh, well, what a beautiful touch. Notice how he killed the cue ball. He's having a little problem with his ball control, though, because he's on the wrong side of the four ball for position for the five. So he's going to go to the side rail the four here come back over here in this area for the five ball it's taking him as he sees him now and he needs this rack Alan I really think he needs this rack just to get on the board well you know Mitch he's a champion all these players are champions and they bounce right back a few mistakes will not change how they're going to play now a couple bad rolls may make a difference yeah. but, <laughs> <can't help. laughs> but no a couple mistakes are not going to stop Ephraim from coming to the table and executing the way he can the 2001 international billiards tournament champion 2001 masters nine ball champion the world nine ball champion in 99 and the ESPN ultimate nine ball champion in 99 he won sixty five thousand dollars for that tournament and the 1999 player of the year Ephraim Reyes has done it all and here in Connecticut, he does what he needed to do, get on the board. Now down 1-2 against Xiaolang Feng of Taiwan. Mr. Feng will have the break in Connecticut. There you see the Sardo tight rack in operation, the only rack with repeatable precision. And a good look at the elephant beautiful balls, the official ball set of the International Challenge of Champions. Xiaolang Feng at the table. Lives in Taipei City, Taiwan. Leads 2-1 in this first set. Race to five. There'll be two sets, and if we have a tie at the end of those two sets, we'll have a sudden death tiebreaker. And trust me, nothing is more exciting than trying to get a chance for 50 grand when you have one rack to play. And a big break for Ephraim. He has a nice shot on the one ball. You can see he's re reaching, reaching over to shoot it now in the corner pocket, bringing the cue ball towards the center of the table. Fung did not pocket a ball on the break. This is not an easy layout. Uh, the balls are open, but they're laying kind of tough. The two ball has to bring the cue ball, draw it back toward the center of the table for the three ball. Okay, has a little angle on the three ball. I'm going to pocket the three ball in the corner pocket, bring the cue ball out toward the center of the table. I like the way he's hitting the ball. He's looking, I was going to say, he's looking pretty strong right now. It's just very smooth. It's just yeah. amazing to watch when he's on, when he's really in stroke. Unbelievable what you say. He's actually very consistent. Now, he wants an angle on the five ball. He does not want to be straight in. And he has a little angle. Should be okay. He's going to have to force it. You're going to see hit the cue ball pretty hard here. Bring it over towards, past the side pocket. Okay, now he has to be careful on the shot right here. The six ball is along the rail. The eight ball, the eight, the eight ball is laying in the corner pocket. Now he's going to play the six into the eight, try to play position for the seven ball. If the six falls in, he'll have position on the seven, but it stayed up. Okay, good. He did not want the six to fall in there. That was nicely done by Ephraim. The thing is, when he is, when he's playing this way, the stroke is so fluid <laughs> and pretty to watch. Without a nothing herky-jerky about it. There's nothing just moving around. You watch it from behind. It's like a master. <laughs> he won the Masters, oh, yes. by the way, also. <laughs> That's right. How sweet. And there's how you play a rack of nine balls when you get a chance. Xiao Lang Fun doesn't make anything on the break. Efren Reyes makes quick work of it, and we are tied at two games apiece in set number one. And how'd you like to be presented with this? The winner's check for $50,000 to our champion of champions being held by Michael Clark, the vice president of Oldhausen Billiard. And that is what you are watching. The International Challenge of Champions, the 12th annual, the longest running continuous billiard show in history. 
right here and every year we add to it thrilled to do so Efren Reyes at the table has just tied this match up two games apiece in set number one against Xiao Lang Feng of Taiwan Ephraim is using a soft break and he's being very successful with it here's the one ball and here's the cue ball he's gonna play the one in the side pocket just come down to the bottom for the two ball wants an angle on the two ball Nice layout here. The two ball will be playing in the corner and bring the cue ball toward the center of the table again by the side pocket, actually, for an angle on the three ball. And that's perfect. So notice, notice the angle on the three ball so he can come over to the side rail for the five ball. Efren looking to me like he's in a little bit of a zone here right now, Alan. Just in his own little nine ball world. <laughs> oh, it's one of the largest paydays <laughs> in pool. $50,000 for the winner. And there's a lot of pressure because it's single elimination. So one one loss and you're out of this tournament. This great field, a great field that Matt and Betty Ann Braun and Billiards International put together here. Eight of the best players in the world, all of them champions. One loss, as Alan said, and you're gone. <laughs> a lot of pressure. So one out of eight is going to be really happy. Wow, his, his speed is a little off, which I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I, I just noticed. He was only coming down a little bit for the nine ball, and he just hit it way too hard. Now, he's been playing very quickly, Al. So maybe just a little too quickly there, but we'll see if we can finish this off. And, you know, I guess when you're Efren, you go, all right, I'm a little out of line. But, uh, it doesn't matter. So that's three racks in a row for Efren Reyes, and but for not calling a nine in the second rack, he'd be up 4-1. As it is, 3-2 now over Xiao Lang Feng, who will have the break. Xiao Lang Feng at the table. From Taiwan, down 3-2 now in set number one against Efren Reyes. And he needs to stay at the table. And he Try switched to get his, back into it. Yes, Mitch, I'm sorry. He switched his break. Notice he broke the balls the same way Efren did. But unfortunately, he did not make a ball. And the one ball is along the side rail. And here's the cue ball next to the three ball. The two ball is right by the corner. So all he has to do is make the one in the corner pocket. They should have position for the two ball. Oh, he missed the one. And that was not typical of Ephraim Reyes. Characteristic there. He's like, he wants to hit it again. <laughs> well, <laughs> the good thing about it, has two, there's two views. It's, it's bad that he missed the one, but it's good because Fung does not have a shot on the one ball. He's going to be forced, it looks like, to kick at it. Unless he can get in between. Now, if he can shoot the cue ball in between here, he can hit it. It looks like he can. If he hits it, he'll try to play safe. Hit it easy. Hit the seven. Oh, just came out a little too much. So now Ephraim will have a nice opportunity for the one ball, which is right here, to pocket the one ball on the side or the corner for position on the two. And one of the big differences in this match so far is that Ephraim has had a chance to stay at the table and play, and Xiao Lang Feng has not. Has very, very few shots in this first set. Can we see Efren change up again? Lefty again. Wow. And he has an angle on the three ball, which he wanted. He may play the three ball in the corner, unless he can roll it in the side nice and easy. A lot of spin on the cue ball. There, just the spin. Notice the spin on the cue ball. How many balls do you think Efren <laughs> Reyes has hit in his life now? <laughs> wow. I know all of you guys do, but... Well, you know, the Filipinos do play a lot of pool. Uh, there's and nothing wrong with that. That's good. And he started playing in 1974. We're talking about almost 30 years now of really, <laughs> really playing some all different kinds of games. Well, when I used to get ready for a tournament, I would mm -hmm. play three hours in the afternoon and try to play two, three hours at night. So you get used to playing day and night. And you're talking about five, six hours a day. So, And I imagine the Filipinos do the same thing when they're playing, getting ready for a tournament. It makes you more fluent at the table. You just get up and you, you practice and you make yourself ready to win. And that's exactly what it, most of the champions will do, get themselves ready to win. Now, here's a nice angle on the eight. You play the eight ball in the corner pocket. Left-handed, right-handed, doesn't seem to matter <laughs> right now for Efren Reyes. This would be to get on the hill and four racks in a row. Beautiful, beautiful shape here. From the pocket cam, you see the result of all those years of playing we keep talking about. One game away from set number one is Efren Reyes. 
He will have a break in just a moment. Striding to the table in that kind of slow, easy way that he has, <laughs> Efren Reyes, looking very calm, very collected, even though there is $50,000 on the line if he moves into the finals against Mika Imanen. On the hill in the first set, Alan. Yes, and he's been very successful making the one ball in the side pocket and actually playing position for the two ball. Pocket the one, here's the two ball. He'll be shooting the two ball in the corner pocket. Watch the cue ball here. It's not going to go too far, I don't believe. He's going to kill it and come up and try to hit the nine ball. Boy. Oh, it's a beautiful shot. He just sliced that so <laughs> thin. Low right-hand English wow. on that shot and come off the rail and just touch the nine. If he doesn't touch the nine, he'll be left safe. Here he'll probably just bring the cue ball up a little bit and go for the four ball. Came through the eight and the six, making sure he has a shot on the four. If you're Xiao Lang Feng, literally, you are just sitting there right now because he hasn't made balls on the breaks. The last two times at the table, he didn't make a ball on the break, giving Efren the chance right back again. I think the one big Boy. mistake he made when he missed the one ball, which he shouldn't have missed, it, was an, it wasn't that tough of a shot. It was just a thin cut. He just didn't hit the one ball. So I, I think that helped Efren a lot. Now, notice the six ball in the side pocket. He's going to just roll it in. Oh, he's going to come down table and back up. He had more of an angle. And I could see. Now the seven ball in the corner pocket. Keep an eye on the cue ball here. The cue ball's gonna travel a little after it hits the seven. One, two rails back out toward the center of the table. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> this is just fun to watch right now. Not for Xiao Lang Feng, but for all these great fans here. In the Wolf Den at Mohegan Sun, Efren calls that nine. And this would be for five consecutive racks and the first set goes to Efren Reyes 5-2. In this format, the loser of the first set will have the break. That would be Xiao Lang Feng of Taiwan. He will have a chance to get back into it. Some of the very interested people inside the Wolf Den at Mohegan Sun in Uncasville, Connecticut, about an hour outside of Hartford and worth anything you have to do to get here. It is an absolutely unbelievable place. So many things to do. And right now, a lot of interest in two of the best nine ball players in the world. And Xiao Lang Feng of Taiwan needs to start getting aggressive. And that break was a little more powerful, Alan, than the ones he's been hitting. Yes, he opened up on that break. He hit them very hard. And he was successful to make a ball. And here's the cue ball, and here's the one ball. Now, he has another thin cut on the one ball. He could possibly try to play in the corner or play a safety. And I think it would be smart to just try and bank this and play a safety, bringing the cue ball Trying to bring the cue ball in between the seven and the three. Not an easy run out. We talk about what's great in this format, Alan. If this were just normal format of, say, race to nine or race to 11, and Efren Reyes, as we walk. <laughs> well, you know what happened there? He miscued. He tried to play a safety. And he actually miscued, so things are not going too that's well. That's the second time in the match that he's on the on the one that he's scratched and given Efren ball in hand, and you cannot do that with Efren Reyes on the other side of the table. Well, he didn't get ball in hand. Oh, he didn't get he ball has, in hand. I thought has, he had missed it completely. But he has a nice shot to start with. I and, pretty much, for Efren, that was ball in hand. <laughs> well, for all these players, that's a pretty routine shot. Yep. Uh, they're all they're all great players, and Efren uh, has a nice opportunity here to win the first game. Uh oh, look out! Look out! Look at that. Now, that's something uncharacteristic of Ephraim, to bring the cue ball and scratch cross side. You won't see that too often, Mitch, I'll tell you that. That's huge, though, in rack number one of set two, because I was going to say, if this was a normal format and Ephraim gets out to a 5 nothing lead in a race to 7 or 9, it's going to be tough to come back. But this way, Xiao Lang Feng has a chance, if he can win this set, to go to a sudden death tiebreaker. Well, this is got to be very careful here. Now he goes left-handed, too. He could double hit the cue ball. No, he's made a nice shot. Okay. Well, that's a big break for Fong. If Ephraim loses this set, Mitch, it will be because of this game right here. It set the pace for this set. Just a little lapse in concentration on Ephraim's part, you think? I think so. Well, he shot it lefty also. See, I, I'm a firm believer that you just can't be as accurate as you can righty, I mean lefty as you can righty. I don't, I don't care what anybody says, it's very hard to do that. Unless you're ambidextrous. Yeah, or unless you're left-handed. <laughs> yeah, unless you're left-handed, <laughs> exactly. 
But, you know, it's 30 <laughs> second shot clock, too. Makes you shoot a little quickly, too. He doesn't right. want to use the bridge, so. Well, this is big. Really, really big. Because since rack number two of the first set, Xiao Lang Feng did not have a game on the board. And he gets the first one in set number two. Efren Reyes will have the break in Connecticut, trying to get to the finals of the International Challenge of Champions. Efren Reyes at the table, Mitch Lawrence and Alan Hopkins joined by an entire wolf den full of pool-loving fans, most of them from the American Pool Players Association, America's largest pool, amateur pool organization. They've been helping out all week and loving it, and they get to watch these two great players. Well, you have to appreciate his break. Here's the two ball. He popped it the one ball in the side. There's the two ball. The three balls up by the side to bring the cue ball right by his hand, right back where his hand was. And that's perfect. And you know, if he keeps making that one on the side, I can't see him getting beat because he's going to have the first shot all the time at the rack. Follow English, left hand spin. Nice break. I'd like Beautiful the balls to be open like this, Mitch. I, tell you yeah. what I'm saying. I wish they'd open oh, like yeah. that all the time. Well, that, that's what makes nine balls so unique. You know, the balls open up different every time. You have a different layout every time you come to the table. And that is what keeps it interesting. I mean, it's incredible to me that you can say, all right, at some <laughs> point it's got to be the same, but it really isn't. Never. It's never the same run out. As we said earlier, Efren Reyes got to this point by defeating Niels Fian. 2001 Netherlands nine ball champion. Xiao Lang Fung got here by beating the 2001 player of the year, Corey Duell. 2001 US Open champion, Corey Duell. 2001 BCA nine ball champion, Corey <laughs> Duell. Corey Duell's won a lot. And he lost to Mr. Fung. Right, but he's got his hands full now. With Efren, who's just, when he gets his break going, like you said, Alan, and the table opens up. He has done what he needed to. This would be to tie the second setup at one rack apiece, and like it was nothing, there from Reyes. Xiao Lang Feng in this alternating break format to try to get to the finals. We'll have the break. A chance to enjoy pool on a weekly basis, and that's a really big deal. Well, one of the things we do with our members, Mitch, is we try to keep them informed uh, uh, more about the game, teach them how to. Uh, give them information that'll help them improve their game, let them know where pro events are taking place so they can come and watch the, the great players play and so on. It's all part of enjoying a sport is to, you know, get into all aspects of it. And then when then we try to give them that opportunity. You know, I, I, think I noticed, Alan, this big difference <laughs> in the breaks here with, uh, oh. with uh, uh, Efren has found that side pocket. We were just talking about that. He makes the one every time. He makes the one every time. And, uh, and, and, and Fang tried, <laughs> uh, you know, but it didn't work for him. So he's gone back to the hard break. And he was successful with the hard break. He pocketed, yeah. looks like he pocketed two, bo two balls on that break, and he's coming around for the two ball now. Looks like it's going to be perfect. It slows up just a little. <laughs> and that's some good speed there. Now, I know he wants to get off and running. I know he wants to get, obviously, there's $50,000 at the end of the rainbow in this tournament, but just to be at the table and get some time and really get into it. Well, this is, this is a, a real pleasure, a match like this anyway, because uh, I'm, I'm sure you've already said, I mean, Efren Ray, as most people say, he's the greatest player that ever played the game. So here you get a chance to watch just, I, I, I suppose, you, I, the Tiger Woods of pool. I mean, what are you yeah. going to say, except he's a little older, but I mean, my gosh. You're right, Terry. You no, in the right. pool he's world, the they say Tiger pool. Woods is the Efren Reyes of golf. <laughs> there you go. But uh, <laughs> it's, it, as much as I've seen him over the years, uh, it's still just a pleasure. You know, to, to, to see how easy he makes the game look. He's got that long, flowing stroke. And he, he plays all games well, Terry, not just nine ball, mm -hmm. but he plays all the games, even billiards, uh, carom, and this, straight, everything. This is close here, isn't it? Yeah, you got around. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got around, had a little angle. We forced it around. It's a little tricky now coming down for the eight ball. If he gets too straight on the six, he'll have a problem. Looks like he has an angle, though. Speed here is very important. Terry, as we get down to this part of the rack, for the people at home who are interested in getting involved in an APA league, and I strongly suggest if you like pool that you do, because they are not only instructional, but incredibly, an incredible amount of fun. How do they go about contacting you? Go to the internet, www.poolplayers, that's with an S, poolplayers, one word, poolplayers.com, and they will, they will be able to see everything there is to know about the APA, including how to get uh, involved locally wherever they live. Well, thank you again for all that you have done. Thank you to the members who have come to help out. We appreciate you being up here in the booth, and we'll see you soon. It's a pleasure to be here, and, and thanks for all the great work you and Alan have done over the years. Well, thanks. Xiao Lang Feng.
gets on the board again. He's up 2-1 in set number two. The magician, Efren Reyes at the table, finds himself down one game to two against Xiao Lang Feng. Rack number four, set number two. Efren won the first rack 5-2. If he should win this rack, he will move into the finals against Mika Imanen. If Xiao Lang Feng should win, we will have a one rack sudden death tiebreaker to see who gets there. This time he did not make the one, but he, he has a shot on the one with the cue ball playing it in between the two balls right in the corner. That was very, very lucky that he had a shot on the one there because the ball's yep. opened up nice. The seven and two's right there. Here's the two ball and here's the three ball. So position, you'll pop the two ball in the corner, bring the cue ball around the table up top for the three ball. Come on. Okay. He ended up playing for the side pocket. Very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Decided to just hit a little easy and play for the side pocket and turned out perfect because mm -hmm. he's straight Four's in the right side. There. Yeah, he's straight in the side pocket, so he'll be fine here. Just roll out for the four ball. And here's a little tricky. He left himself jacked up over the nine ball. Now, the nine ball is directly behind the cue ball. Oh, okay, he's okay. He doesn't have the cue behind over the nine ball. And this is all ball fouls, so you got to be careful about touching any other ball. He will, Mitch. The players don't like to touch balls anyway while they're shooting. You now, we were talking a bit earlier, you and I, about the fact that Efren likes to play a little bit slower than this, but because there's a 30-second shot clock, he's picked up his pace. To me, it shows the incredible adaptability of Efren Reyes that even if he's not playing the pace that he would normally like to, he's still making it look this easy. Correct. Oh, boy, I thought he missed I mean that. Me too. <laughs> I, I thought that's, of course, as soon as you say that. <laughs> but you're right. He will, he will adapt, and he will do what he has to do to win. And adapt he does. Break and run out in rack number four, and we are tied at two racks apiece. It's getting interesting here in Connecticut. Xiao Lang Feng will have the break. You can see there why this is such an amazing venue for championship nine ball. Kind of a little upper deck and some booths down below all the way around the Wolf Den at Mohegan Sun. Xiao Lang Feng at the table. Two games apiece, set number two. He needs this set to desperately stay in this and a chance to get to the finals. We'd have a sudden death tiebreaker if he were to win this set. Scratches on the break, not what he needed out. No, he drew the ball straight back in the corner pocket. That's a bad break for him. If he didn't scratch, he'd had a nice layout. All the balls are open, except for the seven and the nine. Here's the seven and nine. They're tied up, so Ephraim's going to have to address that because that's not an easy run out. He's going to have to break wow. those balls open, which he will when he goes from the five. We'll see, I'll show it to you when he goes from the five to the seven to break it open, or maybe from the two ball. He wants to come out a little. You may see him do it right here. You may see a nice shot where he's going to come off the rail and knock the seven out with the cue ball. I don't know if he has enough angle to do it, but keep an eye. Here's the seven and nine. Let's try and break them open if he can. I don't know if he can. No, he didn't have enough angles, so he'll just break them open with the five ball. He played the three and four in the same pocket. He's biding his time, but every time he moves past <laughs> that seven nine, he's looking at it. Well, he has to because the seven doesn't go in any pocket, I don't believe. So he has to break those balls open. Now, it's hard to tell. Mitch from up here actually if it can go in the side pocket there is a chance it may go in the side pocket if it does then he'll play position for the side pocket but I think he's going to sure, break it I, open yeah I don't know if it can I mean it really looks tough from where we are oh wow we'll he has see. His, yeah look at this he's uh, it looks like he's I don't know how he's going to get to it from there well it looks like he was straight in but he's, he's going to draw back look at this he played for the side pocket I don't know if he got far enough he's shaking his head like he didn't I Okay, he's going to try to play the seven ball will. in the side pocket. And what he'll do is he'll probably go into the eight here. He might. It's hard to say. Wow. There it is. <laughs> Six gone on the break. Seven now. Here's the eight. Ooh, he thought he, he, missed, thought he missed it. He stood up really quickly. <laughs> but there's a lot of pocket there to work with sometimes. And Efren Reyes. <laughs> He's shaking his head, but the bottom line is he gets rack number five. He takes a 3-2 lead in set number two, and he will have the break to get on the hill. Efren Reyes at the table. After Xiao Lang Feng 
scratched on the break at a very inopportune time tied to a piece and now Efren leads 3-2 with the break to try to get on the hill and a chance to move into the finals against Mika Immen and you're watching the 12th annual international challenge of champions it's winner take all fifty thousand dollars in the final and how do you like that soft break here's the one ball and here's the cue ball probably play the one ball on the side or play a safety I don't think he'll play a safety I think it's become offensive here Play the one ball on the side. Come back down table for the two. And he used the four ball to play position. And I don't know if he, yes he can, I guess he can make it. Very difficult to see from up here. He won't hit this too hard. He spun it in, two rails around, around for the, the three. three. <laughs> That's sweet. I, I'll tell you something. That he's just playing so his pace in terms of the rhythm he's going moving around the table has been very, very consistent. It may be quicker than he's used to, but it's been really consistent the whole time. He's going to be awful tough to beat. Also, we're going to have a great yes. setup if we have <laughs> it's Mika Eminen and Efren. Yep. Those two are the players because they're both playing great. And two players here that do not show a whole lot of emotion between Efren and Xiao Lang Feng. <laughs> they just go about their business, and right now. It has been Efren's business most of the time. Okay, he's elected to take a little bit of a longer cut shot, but here you'll see a slip slide stroke. You won't see the cue ball go for it. He's going to slip slide it with low English, low left hand English. Slide to six in the corner, and the cue ball should come up right around by the side pocket. And here it comes towards the center of the table by the side. That's perfect. It's perfect just, cue ball control. I, I really hope you're paying attention at <laughs> home because <laughs> you can learn some things here. Well, if you want to learn how to play nine ball, just pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Put some distance between himself and Xiao Lang Feng. Efren Reyes. Beautiful to watch. Leads 4-2. Set number two. One game away from moving into the finals. Xiao Lang Feng at the table, down 2-4, already down a set. And it is do or die here for him. He needs to get this game or else this match is over. A big, powerful move at it, Allen. And he, he has pocketed a ball on the break, but look at here. Okay, he has a shot on the one ball, so we've got action. <laughs> he pocketed a one on the, it looks like he pocketed the four ball on the break. He has a nice shot on the one ball right here. Here's the cue ball. We play the one ball in the corner. Play position somewhere out here for the two ball. I asked Xiao Lang Feng if he played on TV a lot. You know what he told me? In Taiwan, in Taipei City, where he lives, he plays every week on television. And he also does commentary. Excellent. Amazingly enough. So we can't say that the TV actually got him any <laughs> nervous at all. No, I think he's just getting a few bad rolls. He made one or two errors. Right. And he's and, playing against that. And you know, in this format, two out of two sets, race to five, you know, this, any one mistake or two mistakes can cost you the whole match. So here he has a little problem with position, I think, on the five ball. The three ball right here is going to play the three ball in the corner and probably try to bring the cue ball one, two rails and back down table for the five ball. Going to hit this pretty hard. There it is. Great shot. Notice the spin on the cue ball, the English. Low Beautiful. left hand spin, bringing the cue ball down table. English helps for the cue ball to move around the table. So you don't hit the shot so hard. Here's a shot where we bring the cue ball toward the center of the table again for the six ball in the other corner. In recognition that this is truly an international game, told me he learns to speak English by watching movies on cable TV and loves doing it, watching them in English. And that's in between playing every week, doing commentary and owning two pool rooms, Alan. So He's a busy fella. He's got a lot going on. <laughs> well, pool's a very big game in Taiwan. Sure is. And this was a really, really nice rack. I like the way he ran out here. He really isn't playing bad. Uh, I think he just got a bad start. And with the score, if he makes this being 4-3, he's okay. Crowd appreciative of a very good rack at a tough time. That's what he needed to do. And right now it's out of his hands because Efren Reyes on the hill for the match as the break. And if you're Efren Reyes, this is exactly where you want to be. A chance to move into the finals of the International Challenge of Champions. You've won the first set 5-2. You are up 4-3 in the second set. And all you need to do 
I say all you need to do <laughs> is break and run out or somehow get this game and you'll move into the finals against Mika Imminen, originally of Finland, now living in New York City. One of those two players would win $50,000. And again, that one, Alan, on the break. Well, you know what's really big is not only the one went on the break, but the two ball came up. Here it is right with the cue ball, which is a big break for Ephraim. And that's perfect. Come around for the three ball in the side and that pocket. was dead center there. Well, now you're going to see a nice little uh, English shot. Here's the three ball. He's going to pocket the three ball in the side pocket and bring the cue ball one, two rails, and probably down table here or here for the four ball. One, two, and here it comes down table. He's just going for the chalk at this point. Well, he knows. As soon as he hit the ball, you actually know where you're going to end up. Speaking of chalk, as he put some of that on that cue. We want to take time to thank Viking, the official cue of the International Challenge of Champions. Take your best shot with Viking. And Efren Reyes has been doing nothing but taking his best shot, it seems, in this match so far. And Alan, it's like you said, it's not as if Xiao Lang Feng has played horribly. It's just it's been Efren's day here. Well, here's the shot right here. If he can get position on the six here, it should be all over. And this is not an easy shot. He's going to have to draw the cue ball straight back where his hand is right now, even past there. And here it comes, perfect. <laughs> and you know what? I think for the players at home that think you have to hit the ball really hard to get some draw on it, yeah. that was a good example of just playing the stroke, and the ball will come back naturally. It's the speed of the stroke which gets the action on the cue ball for you. And Ephraim is hitting the speed of the stroke well, perfect. You can, you can really, really learn some stuff here. And I agree with you. I think it's going to be a very, should he make these two balls, and I don't see any reason why he wouldn't at this point, going to be a very, very interesting final matchup between Efren Reyes, the magician, and Mika Imminen, a very focused, very concentrated player at the top of his game. A beautiful match by Efren Reyes, Xiao Lang Feng. Good tournament winning his first match, but he will be going back to Taiwan. Efren Reyes moves on. And now it's time for our Viking Q super shot of the match. Efren Reyes at the table. We're in the second set. Rack number five. We're tied at two racks apiece in this all-important second set. And this shot on the seven hour. And a super shot it is. It doesn't even look like the seven ball goes in the side, but he hits at the perfect angle just to make it go in the side. And the cue ball comes out and kicks the eight out for a shot in the corner pocket. Let's take another look at it from overhead. And we were talking this whole rack, Alan, about whether or not he could get this seven into one of the other pockets. And look at that. Obviously, he could make it. And what's really neat about it, notice the cue ball coming over behind the eight ball and kicking the eight out so he has a shot on the eight ball in the corner pocket. And Efren Reyes went on to win the rest of, take the rest of that rack, take a 3-2 lead, and then ultimately won the second set, five games to three, and two sets to nothing over Xiao Lang Feng. And as we said, now it gets to be fun. Into the finals goes Efren Reyes against Mika Imminen, originally of Finland, now living in New York City, Efren from the Philippines, and it is the International Challenge of Champions. One of those two players will walk away with $50,000. The other one will go a home. Final round action in the $50,000 winner-take-all International Challenge of Champions presented by Viking Q. Let's get right to it and meet the champion. Player number one in this final for $50,000 is the 2001 International Figure Tournament Champion and the World Champion of 1999 from Manila, the Philippines, the magician Efren Reyes. <laughs> and formerly from Helsinki, Finland, the 2001 World Nine Ball Champion, now residing in New York City, if you would, Mr. Mika Imonen. And now let's take a look at our Mohegan Sun tournament format. This will be two sets, each of them a race to five games. In case of a tie, there will be a one rack sudden death tiebreaker. This will be alternating break. There's a 30 second shot clock on each player with one timeout per rack. And this will be a foul on all balls. 
Hello, everybody, and welcome inside the Wolf Den. Mitch Lawrence and Alan Hopkins, and this is the place to be. If you like championship nine ball, there is no more exciting place than inside Mohegan Sun. Efren Reyes, the magician from Manila in the Philippines, doing what he did very well in his semifinal match, and that is breaking the ball and hopefully <laughs> staying at the table, Alan. And this one is for 50 thousand dollars well, you're exactly right mitch he broke the balls and made the one ball on the side notice the cue ball and the two ball in the center of the table together he'll be pocketing the two ball in that corner and here's the three ball so that's what he's going to play position on and that's what he's concerned about right now this is not an easy position shot and he's going to take an extension here he's allowed 30 seconds and after 30 seconds he needs to take it uh, actually a time timeout and then gets 30 more seconds it's allowed once each rack by either player, for both players, correct? Yeah. So you can tell the the place that Efren is in right now of knowing that this is the tough shot for him in terms of this rack, doing something smart. You do not want to get off to a bad start. Mika Eminen playing extremely well, as is Efren Reyes. And he's taking a little extra tough shot on the three ball just to make sure he has a shot on it. And he'll bring the cue ball back out toward the center of the table for the four ball. There it is. Slow down. Slow down. And that is absolutely perfect, wow. Mitch. Wow. And right off the bat, <laughs> right off the bat, saying I've got some speed control. Oh. And we saw him do this, as I mentioned, a semifinal match against Xiao Lang Feng of Taiwan. Two sets to nothing. And he played almost flawless nine ball in that match. Moving around the table quickly, as he's starting to do now that this pattern has been established <laughs> and he can get toward that nine ball as he works his way around let's see where this winds up and there is a little bit of a mistake right there and he knows it that's very uncharacteristic of Ephraim he has all drifted all the way down to the bottom rail where he where to cut the eight to cut the seven ball in here's the seven ball he's gonna try to cut it in this corner no he's not he's gonna play a safe hitting a down table behind the eight ball and bringing the cue ball as so. Excellent shot. But I'll tell you one thing, he hated having to play that <laughs> shot right there. That's for sure, Mitch, because anything can happen here. Now that he's going to kick at the seven, he could actually kick behind. What he's going to do is come behind here and kick the seven ball and try to kick it in the side or the corner. And possibly making the eight ball on the side. Let's see what happens. Let's see how hard he hits it. And yeah. a tough shot for Mika Eminent to come to the table at right off the bat for him. Good hit there. Great shot. Great shot. Notice how he kept the cue ball down table. And I think you're going to see this ball being overcut. What Ephraim will do is hit the seven very thin, and come back down table. There it is. Here it comes for this eight ball. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> it's like he said, all right, well, I, I got out of line on one, but I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> He leans over that beautiful Olhausen table, the official table sponsor of the International Challenge of Champions. Olhausen, the best in billiards, featuring AccuFast cushions. And Efren Reyes of Manila in the Philippines on the board first. One of these two players will walk away with $15,000. The other one will go home. Talk about the pressure. We've got it here. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Mohegan Sun. Mitch Lawrence and Alan Hopkins. As I said earlier, for two guys who love nine ball, this is the place to be. Two of the best in the world going at it for 50 grand. Last year, we saw an unbelievably exciting match. I don't know if it can top it, but with these two guys, it might. Oh, without a doubt. Ephraim Ray is probably the num is the number one player in the world. Mika Imanen is on a roll. He won the world championship mm -hmm. last year. This is a great matchup. The two greatest players in the world right now playing for fifty thousand dollars which doesn't get any better than this. now you won this tournament in 1993 you did get the 50 grand you know what it's like <laughs> it has to be an unbelievable feeling it's an awful lonely way the other side i can tell you that <laughs> it's real nice to win the 50 but it's very lonely to lose it well i have something that i will read to you as the match goes on that has to do with just that and it's interesting you said that mika imminent broke did not make anything on the break and that's going to play a big part in this match. The break will be very, very important, Alan. Ephraim has a nice shot on the one ball. It's a long shot, but it's a shot he figures to pocket. And he missed it. And he might have gotten lucky. No. 
Yes, he did. Yeah. Yeah, that counts. <laughs> that counts. <laughs> Well, you won't see him miss too often, but when he does miss, it helps to be a little lucky, and that's okay. That's how you win tournaments, Mitch. You have to be a little lucky also. Well, and he has won more than his share worldwide since he started playing in 1974. You said to me that he is, as far as you're concerned, of all, and you have played pretty much everybody who's played in the last 20, 30 years. Yes. You said he is the best player that you've played against and the smartest player you've played against. That's without a doubt. I, I would say uh, for sure especially in all the games and uh, what he's done here is, he's, is I think this fifty thousand dollars is <laughs> on a little bit of everybody's mind right here because he's a little out of line and uh, he's left himself a long you know kind of a thin cut shot on the floor he's gonna bring the cue ball two rails back into the center of the table now he decided to hit it hard and come all the way around the table now be careful because this might be a little too hard no he's, I think he's gonna be okay well his speed control well just when you think he's lost a little bit of it then he just goes and does that well, you know what's interesting? The Filipinos have, have brought over, uh, the Philippine players have brought over a, a new style of playing nine ball, and it's a very smart style. And if you want to learn the game, watch the Philippine players play. And you'll see that a lot in this match with Efren Reyes. Right-handed, left-handed, he seems completely comfortable all the time. And as he chalks up that cue, we want to thank Viking, the official cue sponsor of the International Challenge of Champions. Take your best shot with Viking. As he drifts down for the eight and the nine, this would be the first two racks and off to a very quick start for Mr. Reyes. Thing is, Mika Eminen didn't make a ball on the break. You do not get that many chances. And if Efren is on and he's making a couple balls on the break, it could be a long night for Mika and a short night for Efren Reyes. Two nothing now, set number one here at the International Challenge of Champions. The magician, Efren Reyes from Manila in the Philippines at the table. Up two games to none against Mika Imanen. First set, there will be two sets. One of these players will walk away with $50,000. And the pressure right now, and Efren again with that one on the break, is starting to mount. You'll feel it so far. It doesn't seem like Efren's <laughs> felt it too much, Alan, but I know he's thinking about it. Well, it's very fortunate for Mika because the two and the three are tied up. There's the cue ball, and they're tied up, so... He's going to probably play a bank shot on the two. And he's lucky. Off the five? <laughs> well, I don't think he really meant to play it that way. Uh, but it counts. He's smiling because it happened before. And he's just, he said, all right, I'll take him if I have to. Now, how are they rolling for Ephraim Reyes? Oh, man. Here's another bank shot. He's going to bank three ball cross side. <laughs> oh, we'll just show it to you all right now. Just keeps on happening. It's like a nightmare. I mean... <laughs> Efren got here in this very tough format of champions from around the world by defeating Niels Fian, 2001 Netherlands nine ball champion, and then defeating Xiao Lang Feng of Taiwan, two sets to none. And their semifinal match looking very strong all the way. Nothing has deterred him so far. He knows how to play for big money, Alan. We've talked about it before. He really rises when there's a lot on the line. And he can play pool, too. Here you're going to see a nice six ball where he's going to drift the cue ball over to the side rail and play the seven ball in the same pocket. Excellent cue ball control for Ephraim Reyes. Now, what's going to be interesting to me in terms of, because obviously Ephraim's playing and he's playing well. He's about to go up 3 nothing on Mika. If you're Mika and you've got to get back to the table, it's hard to stem this tide. It's going to take a lot for Mika to really change the momentum here. It's torture, Mitch, and you have to sit there and watch your opponent run out. There's nothing you can do about it but wait your turn. It's torturous, but he will he will be okay. In other words, he's used to this. Certainly, he knows it's the game. And Mika Eminen has come back from being down before. He finds himself quickly, very quickly down, 3-0 in the first set to Efren Reyes. The 1999 Player of the Year, 1999 World Nine Ball Champion, and titles too numerous to mention. <laughs> Mitch Lawrence and Alan Hopkins here inside the Wolf Den at Mohegan Sun. It's the 12th annual International Challenge of Champions, the longest running continuous billiard show in history. And there's a reason for it. Great players, $50,000 winner take all prize money. And you bet people like watching it. Oh, Mitch, a big break for Mika because Efren failed to make the one ball on the side. And that's the first time in a long time that happened. It, right, here's the one ball and here's the cue ball. He's going to pocket the one ball in the corner pocket. And the two ball is downtown. Well, that's his concern about where to get with the cue ball. He's looking right now because here's the two ball. 
So he needs to come somewhere in the area where his hand is right now for the two ball. There comes the cue ball back over. Is it too hard? And slow down. Slow down. Oh, boy. Shaking his head and walking around the table. I'm thinking that... Mm, I know he wasn't happy that it drifted that far. Look at this. Maybe in the side. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> so he was playing safe there, Mitch. Well, you know what, though? He walked very quickly. Not like he was leaving the table, Alan. No. Now, he might have taken a safe, but it sure, sure... Maybe in his mind, this is how he's pumping himself up. But it sure looked like he meant to do it. Well, there's a nice shot right there. And what yeah. we're talking about is starting to happen, which is it turns a little bit. Efren doesn't make a ball on the break for the first time, as I said, in a long time. And all of a sudden, match is turned around. You're down 3 nothing, and get one back. And if he can just finish this rack off, he'd get it back to 2-3. And then he would have the break to try to even the match. So when you've got players of this caliber, Alan, we talk about this all the time. Anything can happen especially with $50,000 on the line and two <laughs> players that are used to playing for big money. I mean, Mika's won some big tournaments. The World Championship was fifty, sixty thousand dollars yep. first prize, and, and uh, Ephraim also has played for big money, so in tournaments. Now, Mika has a nice shot on the seven ball to just drift the cue ball down table for the eight ball. He'll bring the, he'll bring the ball down in this area here for the eight ball. And he's liking it right now. Very confident at the table playing great shape and he's saying okay it may be Efren Reyes but my name is Mika Eminem and I'm not scared of anybody this is what we expected a great matchup in the finals of the challenge of champions Efren Reyes at the table the magician we're tied at three apiece first set and he hit that too hard that time the one ball didn't go but the six ball gets a kiss off the one ball and goes in a big break for Efren He's pocketed the six ball on the break. Although, here's the cue ball and here's the one ball. The two ball is tied up down here by the seven ball. So I think we're going to see some safety play unless he tries to break him open with the one. Cutting the one ball in the corner. Coming down table and trying to break open the two seven, maybe. And here it comes. He hits the seven ball. He'll be okay, probably. And there, what a great shot by Ephraim. And that's perfect. <laughs> Boy, you talk about a great position shot. Hits the seven perfect to leave a shot on the two ball. Watch what he does with the cue ball here. He's probably going to double kiss the seven and try to come. Okay, he ended up going forward with the cue ball, and that's going to be a tough, tough layout here for the three, four. Notice the three and the four right here. He's going to, here's the cue ball. He's going to try to hit the three into the four, into the corner, but the four ball is going up table, so he's going to have to be careful with his position here. These are the shots that I like watching him on more than any other because when it's a little bit tough i'm interested to see what he's going to do with it well he brought the cue ball out and here comes the four ball did he hit it too hard and he's okay i think he's all right he's okay i mean he's going to have either a cut shot on the four ball cut the four ball on the side and bring the cue ball around three rails out to the center for the five ball and that's the interesting thing about watching somebody who really knows what they're doing he gave himself a couple of chances if it didn't come down that far he's got the corner pocket did he hit this hard enough Hit this too easy. Hit it too easy. Sneak by. Nope. A little bit harder. He needed it. And here's a big break for Mika. Notice the eight and the cue ball. He got the cue ball up against him. Now here's the five ball. Now it looks like he can't hit the five directly. If he can, no, I don't think he can. Huh? Now here's the five ball. He can hit the five. He can play it over here. But it looks like I, I can't tell. But that's one option if he can hit it. And he was not happy. No, he's not happy. He's not happy. One more inch. He's going to bank this ball, I believe. He can hit it. He's going to bank this cross corner. Oh, he could make it. Oh, he could see it straight in. Wow, Mitch. Now, I couldn't tell he could see that unless he played a little mass yeah, You know what? You see him walking around <laughs> scratching his head, and you're going, well, he, he can't make it or else he just... <laughs> wow. I mean, I mean, from here, it looks like he had no <laughs> shot at it. Excellent shot that's, by Efren. That, that's the beauty of Efren, though. He just doesn't, he really doesn't tell you a whole lot. Now he's going to have to tell us something, though. <laughs> yeah. He has to keep doing tricks, the magician. Man. <laughs> oh, here's a nice shot. He's going to bank the eight ball cross side. He's going to keep the cue ball behind the nine. Keep an eye on the cue ball here. The cue ball will be behind the nine ball if he misses it. There. Oh. He let it get away. So, Mika, a big opportunity Ooh. for Mika. Wow. Mika was up out of that seat very quickly. 
Unbelievable. $50,000 quickly. <laughs> Unbelievable, Mitch. Unbelievable. <laughs> and Mika stands up. He makes it. I'll tell you, that was not an easy shot either. No, it wasn't. But he'll take it. This would be for four racks in a row for Mika Imanen after Efren Reyes took the first three. And it puts Mika Imanen on the hill in the first set. A lot of ups and downs, topsy-turvy, ins and outs, and when you're playing for this kind of money, this is what we expect. Mika Imanen, 4-3, and he'll have the break to take the first set. And, uh, so it's, it's a good show for him. Well, once we got started and the people started, you know, getting into it little by little, you could feel the excitement. It's always nice to be around a lot of people who know the game. These players do know the game. You mentioned they filter in from all over New England to get down here and see it. We're glad you're with us for this rack. We'll talk to you a little bit about the APA in just a second, Alan. And a good break for Mika Emin and a really powerful one. And he is staking his claim right now. A super break. Uh, he, made, he made three balls on the break. He's got the two ball, which is very important, right with the cue ball where he can make it. And the three ball is not far away either. If he brings a cue ball to the center of the table, he should be able to run out this rack. Well, the key, this is pretty tricky to get on the three, isn't it? Because he has to shoot the three in the same corner that he's making the two, doesn't he? Yeah, if he, if he can keep the cue ball in the center of the tail, it'd be okay. But you're right, it is kind of tricky. It's a speed control shot. And, you know, it's hard to tell from ter Terry the angles up here. It it's, is. You know, it's a lot different up here than down there. He might try to run into the three, it almost looks like he's trying to do. No? He's trying to look at, and that was the, that was the, the tricky part of it. It yeah. really was, yeah. You know. See, now he's got a tough cut, but, uh, you know, these guys say, they young usually players. make it because they have young guys that get these eyes. <laughs> 25 years ago, this was a hanger, right, Terry? <laughs> now it looks like it's impossible. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a great shot. Oh, boy, he made it. <laughs> it hung up a little bit, teasing him a little bit. Now That I think was he, a great shot. It was, and this is, uh, a this is just a straight follow, I would say. He'll just uh, he'll go to the short rail and then back across the table for the six. It's, it's uh, not a difficult job at all. You think he'll come up uh, between nine and six or stay on the bottom? Well, look, look, I think he would come up between them, but he didn't. He, he stayed didn't. below it. To make sure, yeah. I was wondering if he would do that, yeah. Once, so? a, once again, you, you're young like this. You got a lot of confidence you're going to make the long ones. You know, we talked about early on turning this match around when Efren Reyes was up 3 nothing early. Mika Imminent has done just that. Terry? You have created for people with the founding of the American Football Players Association a while ago a great place to go and play every week, and get involved in the game. And being able to watch players like this obviously helps too, but being able to play is what you're... Well, I, I would say probably one of the greatest uh, membership benefits of being in the American Pool Players Association is to take, be able to take advantage of the handicapping system that equalizes play for, for players of all abilities. So I urge everyone to go to the internet. That's poolplayers.com. And go to the internet, poolplayers.com, that's one word with an S, and uh, you'll be able to find everything you need to know about the American Pool Players Association, including how to join. And it's been a pleasure being here with you, Mitch. Well, we yeah. thank you for all your work and everything Three you've done, and I know Mika Imminent right now is one happy camper. 5-3 in the first set. He takes that set in our format. The loser of the first set will break. That will be Efren Reyes. They're going for $50,000. Originally from Helsinki in Finland, now living in New York City, one of the hardest working nine ball players in the world. Mika Imminen does not only work hard on his game in a pool room, works out a lot, is very physically fit, knows that he has to train mentally and physically to stay on top, and he has done just that, getting better every year he has been playing. And a big, mm. powerful break, unfortunately, <laughs> With all the rest of those balls, mm. three of them, the cue ball. Three on the break, and the cue ball is number four, and Ephraim will have ball in hand. And, you know, when you talked about working out and stuff, not to uh, change what you just said, but Ephraim's at the table with ball in hand. But the other day, uh, Corey Duell and Mika Eminem went to go work out in the spa. I mean, you know, Mika even said to him, let's go work out, you know. And me, I went you to the coffee shop and had a Danish and a cup of coffee. Say, you're saying that didn't happen before? <laughs> well, you know, it's, 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 it does help. It does help your game. I thought I was going to hear you say the words, in my day. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's nice to be in shape, and it does help your pool game. People think that you don't have to be in shape to play pool, and you do have to be in excellent shape. Well, Mika talked about stamina, and you know this, that this particular format, as well as other formats, you have to play multiple matches, and you better be in shape. You better be able to just stay there and if you look at nothing else than the way the players' bodies are every time they get over a shot, you need to be in shape. Without a doubt, Mitch, you're exactly right. That's why working out helps. 
All right, Efren. Working his way around the table. And what a big, big break for him. Mika scratching. And making three balls on the break. It's not like you need to write a thank you note after that. It's like playing six balls. Six left on the table and ball in hand. If you're Efren Reyes. Oh, no. Oh. Now, wait. Again? Again, he didn't call the nine ball. Well, look at the break here for Mika. Wow. This is the second time that this has happened to Efren in the last couple of matches. And I'm taking one away from Efren. And I'm going to give it to Mika Imminent. You have to call the nine, even if it's a straight-in shot. Wow. That is the rule. That's the format. Efren knew it. And he gives that one over to Mika Imminent. When you're playing for $50,000, mental mistakes like that obviously can hurt. And there is one unhappy Efren Reyes right there. Feeling the sting of not calling the nine again. Did it in the semifinal match. Mika Imminent is taking advantage of everything that's coming his way. Not only is he playing great nine ball, but he's shown a lot of heart, a lot of guts coming back from down three racks in the opening set to win 5-3. He's now at 2-1 in set number two. A big break mm. again. Oh, boy, look now, out. let's see. Don't let the two go in. If let's the two goes in, oh. Let's see where he's going to wind up. Oh, Mish, unbelievable. Man. Look at this. Three-nine combination. Of, the three and the nine are lined up dead in the corner pocket, and the one and the two went on the break. We're going to see a fast rack here if he calls it. Man. <laughs> he's going to call it probably. But, I mean, it's a three-nine well, combination. He's looking to see. Now, let's see if he does it because he did not call it. He did not call it. He missed it. Wow. What a big break. And you know, somebody shouldn't tell him not to call Ladies it. Ladies and gentlemen, let the players play, if you would. Wow. Yeah, that was a big turnaround. I'll tell you, you get wrapped up in the heat of the match, and I was about to say before that Mika has not done that in any of his matches. That's where the $50,000 starts taking over. You think you got a chance for a 4-9 combination early into that rack. And this is what I meant. You can never count anybody out of a set. Well, what a turn of events, Mitch. I mean, that 3-9 was on, and I think Mika just, just missed it. I know wow. somebody was yelling in the audience, you know, call it or something, but I think he had already called it. And he's still not out. You know, this is not no, oh, look how he <laughs> He liked that shot. He hit the 9 out of the way so he could make the 6 ball next. That was sweet. I, I think he got a little fortunate there that he did hit it, but... He still would have been okay with a combination on the 6-9. So he's going to play the 6-ball in the corner and bring the cue ball around two rails for the 7-ball. Boy, a lot going on right now. And it's what you expect to happen as it gets closer toward the end of this match, one way or the other. It starts getting very interesting when this much money is at stake. I don't care who you are and how many times you've played for big money. <laughs> Anytime you put 50 grand on the table and say, here it is, something's going to happen. And Efren, again, in danger of not calling it. Wow. But this time he does. And so just like that, we swing around, and it's two games apiece in set number two, and Efren will have the break. Making mental errors and the crowd getting into it, trying to let them know to do things, not do things, call it. They're just getting into it now. And Efren Reyes is so wrapped up in it. There's a nine. Look at this. He made the nine, but it won't count. The nine will not count. <laughs> in this format, you cannot, you cannot make it on the break. It's considered lucked in. Now, if he had learned, talked to, turned to Steve Tipton and said, I'm calling the nine on the break. No, he cannot. <laughs> okay. But here's the two ball, and here's the cue ball. And the seven ball looks like it's in the way, so he really doesn't have a shot on the two ball unless he wants to play a combination, but he will not. I don't think he'll... Well, he may. He may play the combination and stay at the table. No, he played, he played a bank shot on the two, and it hung up. And a nice opportunity now for Mika. I don't know why he played that. I mean, I don't that either. was kind of like a, 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 almost a give-up shot there. But, but anyway, he played it, and the two ball is hanging in the corner. And here's the three ball. So if he makes the two, Mika will have easy position on the three ball. Just make the two. And... A nice opportunity now for Mika. <laughs> <laughs> this is back and forth now. <laughs> it's very exciting, I'll tell you. <laughs> and one great thing about, we've talked about this before, Alan, one great thing about this format is you can lose that first set, 
you still have the second set to get back into it. You do not get blown out just because you've lost the first set, and that's exactly what we're seeing here. That's what's so unique about it. Whew. Exciting format. You can feel it, feel it building in here right now. He's going to roll this in nice and easy. Just come off. He does not want to be on the other side of the seven. He's perfect. And we may see all three balls go in the same pocket. Seven, the eight, and the nine. That's a nice thing, isn't it? <laughs> you have a lot of work to do. Yeah, like a little one pocket yeah. game. <laughs> I know you like one pocket. Oh, yes. But he's, he's straight in on the seven, so he'll probably just stop right there and throw it back a little bit, not much. And he'll play the eight in the same pocket and bring the cue ball over to the other side of the table for the nine in the same pocket. Taking his time. At this stage, every shot key. Leaves himself in good position and points to that pocket. And this for Mika Imminen would be for a 3-2 lead. Pocket cam says it's good. And Mika Imminen breathes a sigh of relief after a big break by Efren Reyes. Miss on the two and Mika takes advantage and he will have the break. And there you see the two different faces that are telling the story of this finals match. Efren Reyes a bit disconsolate right now. He knows that he's made a couple of plays that he has to wonder about. Mika Imminen, on the other hand, anxious, focused, jumped up to get to the table, knowing that he has the break. He is up 3-2. He won the first set 5-3 with five consecutive racks at the end of that set. This would be to get on the hill one game away from a $50,000 winner-take-all payday. And he has been crushing this break, Alan. Yes, he has. He hit those awfully hard. He's made the three ball on the break, and oh, boy. This is sweet. <laughs> it's Big time. sweet. He made two balls on the break, and the one ball and the cue ball right here. He'll play the one ball in there and bring the cue ball back down table somewhere for the two ball. He has to be very careful here. He mainly wants to make sure he gets the cue ball down to the bottom rail, low right hand spin on the cue ball. Be careful he does not scratch in the side pocket or the other corner pocket. And here it comes, perfect. Get to the rail and have an angle to get up. And well, I'll tell you, he has been playing well. That was Mitch. great. It's a big game. That I was great. This is a swing game right here, Alan. Well, you see the five and six along the rail. The ball's right here. He's going to have a problem with. Could have a problem with. And here, okay. So the five and six is going to tell the tale, Mitch, because it's not easy getting on both of them. Now he's thinking ahead a little, as you always do, and he shook his head a little bit when he looked down <laughs> at the five and the six. Well, here it comes he right knows. here. He's yep. going to have to play the cue ball now. He's going to play the five ball in the corner pocket, bring the cue ball. He's going to play the five in here. I think he's going to bring the cue ball back over this way or come one, two rails like this. I believe he may draw the ball. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, and a great break for Ephraim. Wow, a big break for Ephraim. Oh, boy, I tell you what, right a $50,000 break, Mitch, I'll tell you that. Unbelievable. Ephraim has life. I bet he shoots this lefty, Mitch. Oh, look at this. Now, now you, this is when you know it means something right now. Exactly. He's shot so many shots left-handed, and this time he says no. Now, did he call this? I don't know, did he? I think he did. <laughs> oh, no. I hope he did. I think he did too. Wow. Wow. So instead of on the hill, Mika Imminent, here we go again. Another emotional swing. And Efren Reyes, for all that we've talked about, is now tied in the second set, three racks apiece. And he has the break trying to get to the end of this set. Back and forth we go. Zeros and a five in his future <laughs> if he can win this game. $50,000. He's one game away, and as Alan Hopkins told me <laughs> during the break, Efren Reyes, amazingly, is only three games away from $50,000. So he can't feel out of it yet, but Mika definitely has the advantage with the break and on the hill. Here's what it comes down to right here. Watch out for the cue ball. Look at here. He has to come with a shot, I think. The three ball comes over to the rail, and wow. we have action. He made three balls on the break. He made the one, the two, and the eight. And here's the three ball and the four ball together. Here's the cue ball. So Ephraim may have gotten a break. He may play the combination here to three into the four and try to make the four in the corner. 
And that's what he's looking at right now. If he makes this, Mitch, it's going to be all over Showtime. optic. Showtime. Yeah, and this is not an easy shot. Well, we saw him come with one in the game previous. Yeah. Wow, he made it, but he didn't play position on the three. Made a nice shot, but he didn't, didn't play any position. So now he's faced with a safety, unless he wants to get very offensive. Now, here's the cue ball, and here's the three. He'd send the three ball down table and bring the cue ball back over in this area. Or he could just try to bank the three and become very offensive. But I think he's going to try to play safe, bring the cue ball over maybe behind the six or just bring the three ball down table. This is very important. He'll take a Takes timeout. Takes his timeout. This could be the whole match right here. Yeah, but you know what? We have alternated racks now for the last five racks. And I have no clue what's going to happen now. <laughs> well, I'll tell you Sometimes what. Sometimes you good. get a feel for it, but right now I have no idea. There's nothing wrong with that right there. Yeah, I know. Ephraim has to come with a shot. And he is going to probably try to play a bank shot, trying to bank the three or just play a five ball, the three into the five. Whatever he does, it's not going to be an easy shot. How do you like and it? And he made a great shot like by that front. There's a sign of a champion, like Mitch, right there. Man. And trust me, he is right back in this match right now. This is exactly what I was talking about. Unbelievable format where you can have this kind of back and forth action. Excellent shot he made. And he has a nice layout here with the six ball. He just stopped the cue ball right there for the seven ball on the side. Won't take any. Oh, he drew the ball back. Okay, he doesn't want to take any chances of not being on the seven. So <laughs> I think he's a little hey, now, pumped up, I'll tell you the truth. I, he is, but I'm just wondering. Let's see if he calls it. The crowd's going to start yelling. There he goes. <laughs> and there was no doubt about that one. And this is what we've been waiting for. All right. Both players coming with the shots. This is what comes down to when you've got the best in the world. 4-4, four, four, second set. Second if Efren set, wins this game, four, we have four. a sudden death tiebreaker. If Mika wins this game, he's got $50,000. Said that I didn't know where this match was going. I'm not the only one. This entire crowd has been moving up in their seats, Alan, inch by inch for about the last five racks. All right, let's go, let's go. The international go. challenge of champions. Two world champions, former world champions, Efren Reyes in 99, Mika Imminent in 2001. He made, the, he made a ball, he made the There's two another ball. another one. Oh, boy. Look where the three is in the corner. Three balls on the break, the one and the two ball, and the four ball. The three ball is hanging in the corner pocket. Here's the cue ball, but position for the five ball is not going to be easy. By far. Now, he may elect to play for the combination after he makes a 3-3-7 three three combination, which probably would be easier to do. Let's see what he elects to do. This is a very, very careful he has to be here. Okay, he's elected to play the 5-7 combination. I believe he did anyway. Well, because he's not, he's not, oh. he wanted it down there. He wasn't looking happy. But he's still going to play for the combination. Now, the combination is right here, the 5 into the 7 into the corner pocket. And the whole thing is holding the cue ball there for the five ball. That, this is not easy. No, that's why, why he wanted more down the yeah. table, right? Yes. So he could have an easier time doing that. You are correct, Mitch. But, but I'll think, I think he's going to, you know, under the circumstances with the $50,000 and stuff, I'll tell you, this is not an easy shot. And he's going to play it. And he made it. Oh, look out for the are. cue ball, though. See the cue ball? Right. That's not, you know, he still isn't out yet. This is not easy. He's got to cut the five in now and play position for the six ball. So we are still, he's got to hit the five very thin. Now he's got to watch out. The reason he's pulling the sleeve on his sweater up is because <laughs> if that sleeve touches the nine ball that it's, it's hanging foul. over, it is a foul. And trust me, it would be over then. Made it, man. <laughs> He made it look like a hanger, didn't I, he? <laughs> I'm telling you, there's some ice water in those veins. He made it look like a hanger, Mitch, to tell you the truth. First the combination, and then that slice on the five. Six and the eight right down there. And I'm not going to uh, say anything yet. I'll tell you the <laughs> truth, because I've seen too many things happen. Oh, uh, boy. This is so exciting. He's got to get... You may see the cue ball travel a little bit here for the nine ball. Uh-oh, watch out for the side pocket. Oh, he hit this too hard. This is too hard. Oh, 
This is too hard. Look at this. What's he gonna do? He's got. He's looking at a bank. Oh, what is he? Boy. I mean, oh <laughs> boy. I tell you what, Mitch. Uh, that was too hard. I knew as soon as he hit it. Now he's gonna have to try to cut this yeah. in. He's gonna cut it in. Well, I'll tell you what. If anybody can do this, he can. He cuts the ball as good as anybody living. Okay. This is either for a tie and sudden death. Look at he this. made it. Look at that. Great show. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> got action. <laughs> You had better believe they're on their feet. Okay, let's set it up. This is what it all comes down to and what we thought might happen at the beginning right. of this match. Sudden death, one rack. This is it, the end. $50,000 will go to one of these two great champions. Efren Reyes on the left, Mika Imanen on the right. And Mika Imanen will have the break. And that was not even close, Alan. No, it wasn't. Getting a look at a product that has become a fixture in championship pool, the Sardo Tight Rack, the only rack with repeatable precision. He knows what this is all about. He's been in this situation before. He knows he has no control over what's about to happen on this first shot. All he wants is a chance to get back to the table. Mika Imanen, on the other hand, hoping to make something happen and stay at the table. He's done it before in this match. And now he's in a position to win $50,000. The players will each have two timeouts in this one rack at the Challenge of Champions. Lucky he can't win on the break for Ephraim, because he's been breaking. Don't scratch. Has he made a ball? Yeah. Yes, he has. Look at Just this. Just at oh. the end. Well, Those balls are tied up, though. No, Mitch, actually, he has a nice layout. He can. Here's the cue ball, and here's the one ball. And here's the two ball. So he's got a nice opportunity here. That last for a run out. cleared him, yep. Yeah, the four ball is right here. That could be the only ball, but I think he's got a nice opportunity here for a run out. Now, the $50,000 makes a big difference, <laughs> too, you know. And being one game, you can't make a mistake. And he hit at the perfect speed to come out toward the center of the table. Eight balls, seven balls away, $50,000. Okay, he does not want to be straight in on this, and he did get straight in, and that could be a problem. And he knows it. That could be a problem. Now, as you see, he's going to play the three ball in the corner, but the cue ball, he's going to have to draw it back for the four ball because he wants to play the four ball on the side next. And the five ball is in a good position where if he gets straight in on the four, it would be okay. And you have to be careful now. He has to be a little careful here because sure does. He has to put a little stroke on this because the seven ball could get in the way into the play here. Oh, man. So, well, just take a deep breath, Meek, and fire it in the side and roll the cue ball with high English. He's got to follow the cue ball. High English, follow through. And look at the seven ball come into play. That's what I was talking about right there. That's exactly what I was talking about, Mitch. The seven ball getting in the way. Unbelievable. And now he's going to be forced to kick it ball, but it's not over yet because this is a kick where if he hits it, he could get lucky. So it's not over. He's going to be forced to go to the side rail. And boy. <laughs> you know, at this point, though, to be in a place where you're just thinking about maybe oh. I can get lucky 50 grand. The scratch is very big here. He has to watch out for the scratch. And look out. And... Well, here it is. An opportunity now for Ephraim to come to the table and win the Challenge of Champions. And wow. <laughs> and that is what you want. Yep. As I said before, he just wanted a chance to get there. And now let's see what he can do with it. And Mika Imanen is absolutely sick. Oh, he has to be. He's going to play the five ball in the left-hand corner and bring the cue ball back down table for the six ball. How's that for a shot? And How that is, is that for a shot? And here it is, and I'll tell you what. How is that for a shot? After all this, How was three that? balls <laughs> for 50 grand. Unbelievable, I'll tell you. Well, the 50,000 does come into play, Mitch. You gotta say that. Absolutely, <laughs> not even a question. Low left-hand English on the cue ball. And that is exactly what you want to see. And you better believe that Efren Reyes is pointing to the final nine that is worth 
$50,000. Unbelievable. And there you see a man who last year, Francisco Bustamante, lost 50000 in a sudden death tiebreaker to Fong Bang Chow. His countryman, Efren Reyes, will take it home. A disconsolate <laughs> Mika Imanen, four balls away from that same check and cannot get it done. He will be back, though. And now it's time for our Viking Q super shot of the match. And if there ever were one outside of the final nine ball, it's this nine ball, which came when Efren Reyes was at the table, tied four apiece. This was to get into the sudden death rack. And Alan, you talk about a thin slice pressure pack shot. It's an unbelievable shot. He just spins the nine ball down the rail, and it just has enough speed to reach the pocket and fall in. If he misses this ball, it's all over. A super shot by Efren Reyes. And here at the end of an unbelievably amazing match between Efren Reyes and Mika Eminen, the winner, the champion of champions being presented that trophy by Terry Bell of the American Pool Players Association. There it is. And if you want to see Efren Reyes smile a very, very big smile, he will do so. He loves holding that up. He is about to love even more holding this up. Mr. Paul Munich, the Vice President of Sports and Entertainment for the Mohegan Sun. A check for $50,000 to Efren Reyes as our champion of champions. It has been a phenomenal event.